Today's video is going to be extremely serious because there's a lot at stake. Get it, guys? Alright guys, so we're back with another video. Uh, what we're going to show you today is we just ran to Walmart uh, to get groceries for the family and just happened to spring up on an idea. Hey, tomorrow the weather's supposed to be decent here. Be a good day for a grill cook with some nice ribeye steaks. And these are nothing fancy, just uh, Walmart. I got two, and actually, I got two in this package. Uh, they're real thick. So me and my daughter love steak. We like medium steak. And uh, we're going to show you guys how to cook those medium because that's how we like to eat them. And then I got the thinner cut ones uh, from my wife and uh, other daughter. Uh, they like it a little bit thinner and it's a little bit easier for me to get them well done because that's how they like it. So we're going to walk you through the process where this is not a conventional marinade. Uh, I want to show you guys how easy it is just to get random stuff out of your fridge and do the first process of the steak and marinate it overnight in that and then get it out and put your favorite seasonings on it. Tie them, put them on the grill and have the best steaks ever. I just want to show you that marinade is a pretty important part of it, but it can really be done with anything in the fridge, most anything in the fridge that has salt in it. So first step, as you guys know, what I like to do, get them out of your package and rinse them off. I always rinse them. Turn the water pressure real low so you don't splatter everywhere. Okay, get your dish close by. Lay them flat, as flat as you can get them. Wanted to explain something also, um, and I actually read up on this online. See how so, see how the meat looks really good and fresh here, uh, and you get these dark spots on your meat and hamburger meat. See how that side's perfect, and on that side you got a little dark spot right there. What that means, guys, is. Uh, the only thing that means is that that meat has been sitting in that package and that's actually a blood stain on the meat. It does not mean that your meat is bad. Um, the number one telltale sign of bad beef or pork or anything else, chicken, turkey, whatever you're cooking, the first uh, sign of a bad piece of meat is smell. So all that is, I forgot the technical name that they call it, but... Uh, it's just where the, it's been sitting in the package or sometimes they'll package them with meat on top of each other like that and the blood will gather in that part and that's the color it turns. So you won't even see that when it's cooked. All right, so here's what we're gonna start with guys. You're going to, these are the four things I'm gonna marinate it with uh, other than the beer. We're gonna use beer instead of water to break all this down. I'll show you that in just a minute. You're gonna wanna get some kind of highly concentrated liquid, uh, highly concentrated salt liquid like high sodium soy sauce. Um, you're gonna wanna add some flavor in there. That's why I chose this Asian Zing, and this is actually a wing. Uh, you, you toss it in wings. We're not using it for that. Honey Dijon, it's gonna bring in a little bit of like a, a horseradish taste, just, just a touch, uh, kind of make it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of a vinegary taste. And then we're gonna use the rest of my pineapple heat rib glaze. Um, that's going to bring even extra flavor into this. What you're trying to do is get salt into it to break the meat down and as much flavor in it as you possibly can overnight while you soak these steaks. So nothing fancy. I watered this down about 50-50 so with your rib glaze because this stuff is extremely thick and we're not going for thick. We're going for um, kind of a runny substance. That way it can soak into the meat. Next thing I do is put in the honey Dijon and you want to put this in kind of the second or third step. And the reason being is because you need to break it down in liquid. Now, I know this looks gross guys, but <laughs> and I know it looks weird, but trust me, there's a method to this madness. Soy sauce. You want to do about a quarter of the bottle. We're going to use all of the Buffalo wild wings, Asian zing. Like I said, it's a marinade. This stuff gets poured down the sink here in just a little bit once these steaks have marinated. Okay, and then gonna mix it. 
the Honey Dijon obviously is not going to stay completely broken up, but it'll give it more of a smooth brown texture. See how it's starting to look like marinade now. Another thing I forgot to mention, okay, last step, we're going to soak it in beer instead of water. It'll dilute it down and help break it up. Half to a three quarter of a beer is perfect. Another thing I forgot to mention is we're actually going to soak these first and then we're going to trim them. And then we're going to tie them and then we're going to put our seasonings on them. And I like to put the seasonings on the steak about an hour before I cook them, which that gives me enough time to get the grill started and all that. So watch how easy this next step is. See, look at that. It looked, looked horrible at first, but now it just looks like a really good marinade. And there is nothing to this step. Pour your marinade all over your steaks. And you don't want to flood the bowl. You just, you want to cover the bottom. Okay. And that is about all I'm going to use. Now, here's the trick. Once these have been in the fridge, get up in the morning before you go to work or, you know, first thing in the morning, take a fork, lightly poke them the ones that are exposed up here, and just flip these. You don't have to flip all of them, just the ones that are above the liquid for right now. But that's it for the night. Stick these in the fridge, let them soak, flip them in the morning. You get home from work after flipping these, um, we get home at you know four, five, six o'clock, whatever. That's when you take them out, you trim them, you put your seasonings on them, and you slap them on the grill. That process is coming up here in just a little bit. So we're gonna put these to bed for the night, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, it is uh, day two. The steaks marinated in the refrigerator all night in the concoction that we showed you. Um, okay, so step two, what we're going to do, we're going to show you how to trim this competition style. Now, the way I cook them, I know that competition and backyard barbecue uh, steaks are a little bit different in the sense that they don't have as much seasoning and spices and all that good stuff. I always cook mine competition style and uh, tie them and do all that stuff and that's exactly how my family like them so I don't want to get out of the habit of making a backyard steak and not be able to keep my competition steak part uh, you know uh, in other words I don't want to get off my game so first thing you want to do this is a big ribeye as you can see this here is gonna fall apart as soon as you put it on the grill take that bad boy off there Make sure you sharpen your fillet knives before you start this process and don't cut, cut your finger like I did the other day on that brisket. Whew, it's still not healed all the way. So once you got a good cut going, your, your goal is you want to make these as round as possible, um, almost like a hockey puck. And as you can see, I'm cutting out most of the fat and some people like a lot of fat on their steak. Me, I don't. I have a daughter that does. And, uh, but, you know, like I said, I just, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I, I can't leave it on there. It just, it looks too gross. And I just don't, I don't like the way it looks. So, um, yeah, just keep slicing. Make it round on your edges. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to trim this one. And I'm going to trim the other three that we have to put on the smoke or grill. Go figure. I always say grill on my videos when I'm smoking and now I'm saying smoker and we're actually grilling. You can take and kind of shave that off. Keep your hand below the steak because that's how I got cut the other day. That's exactly how I got cut. But you just want to get some of that fat off there. That's, that's the goal. See how ugly that piece looks right there? So you just take and kind of round it off right there. All right, let's get some seasoning. Let's tie it and get some seasonings on these. Next step, you're just gonna make sure that all this is somewhat uniform all the way around. You're gonna have a little piece right there cut off. And what I do is I double tie mine. I'll show you what I mean. Go around. 
around twice and then you loop it and then loop it. Why do you tie your stakes? Okay, this is why. Because, and see I'll pull it tight and make sure it doesn't pop up and start doing funky stuff. Pull it tight and then knot it. You tie your stakes because ribeyes especially, they have that muscle called the spinalis muscle that runs around the, along the side of it. You throw it on the grill, you go to flip it, it splits and falls apart, and all of a sudden you have an ugly steak. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get the other ones uh, trimmed up, tied up. We'll bring you back for the seasoning in just a minute. All right, guys, here's what we got going on. Okay, so we're going to use the Cosmos uh, salt, pepper, garlic uh, for the top. We're going to use this for the first, the Honey Chipotle Killer Bee. I know that I have not used this yet on any of my cooks because it wasn't even opened. So this is going to be kind of a exciting deal. All right, so here again, what we're going to do, don't be scared of seasoning it. Get you some seasoning on there. And if you'll notice on my pan, I, um, I always put that grate down. That way you can flip them. Because if you use something flat, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have to uh, let the top sweat in just a little bit before you can flip your meat. So this way, yeah, it's important to get your sides. So go ahead and flip that one. And I'm just, and I know this video is going to be a little bit longer, but the reason being is because I want to show you guys step by step how to do this. See, these are already starting to sweat in. And like I said, don't be scared. Don't be scared to season them up. Especially something like this. I mean, it's going to be really good. Any Cosmos product is extremely good. Okay, that's enough of that. Then we're gonna put our SPG on there. Don't have to put this on the side. Can if you want, but you don't have to. And as you can see, these are kind of thick steaks. So they're gonna take, what we're gonna do is temperature probe them and that's when we're gonna know when they're done. So what you wanna do, and this is the part, this stuff here I wouldn't put too much on there because it is real salty. So if you like a lot of salt, then yeah, go ahead, cover it up. If not, go a little bit light with it or medium. I just go, I put a little bit on there and I like it because it's got texture. That's why I use it on steaks. It's got, a, it'll, it'll give your steaks a really good bark. All right guys, I'm gonna go fire up the grill and we are going to get started. See you in a few. Just wanted to show you guys our view out here real quick at the lake. I don't think I've ever showed you this. It's beautiful. Every day we wake up and just feel completely blessed and feel so lucky to have this place. This is uh, Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma. And uh, you can see the lake right there. Uh, back there is a boat dock. But yeah, it's just beautiful out here. I mean, I feel so lucky to live All right, here. Let's get this fire lit and then we're gonna put some steak on it. All I'm using here are these little tumbleweeds. There's two, I put two down. Uh, charcoal we're using today is Jealous Devil Lump Charcoal. Some of the best I've ever bought. Okay guys, this is about the point whenever you use one of these chimney starters, you see the flames coming out of the top. Now don't be fooled because when you first start them, flames will come out of the top. But this is a consistent orange and blue flame coming out and I can look right down there and see gray. Uh, so the charcoals are already spark, starting to turn. Put a really thick, good grill glove on. Pick it up, pour it on in here. around a little bit. Kind of make it even. <clears throat> All right, that's it. It's empty and this fire is rolling. Damn. 
now, these grill grates have been sitting over here to the side, so I know they're not hot. So, before that fire is, I'm telling you, this Jealous Devil's charcoal, there's nothing to play around with. Okay, now we're gonna let the ember, we're gonna let the charcoal get a little bit grayer. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this grill grate down, and then we're gonna put it on there, heat it up, put our steaks on. We're almost there, guys. Okay, guys, now this is the part where you impress your friends or family or whoever's coming over to eat steak with you. When you put these grill grates on, okay, I usually check them with an infrared thermometer on the grill grate to make sure that they're around 550-ish, 550 degrees, somewhere like that. I do know from experience, my temperature up here is holding at about 350, so you can add 200 degrees to that, and that's how hot the grill is actually underneath the grill grate. So... Here we go, we're gonna slap these things on. I'm gonna take you through the whole process. You're gonna see me turning them, putting butter on them, all that good stuff. So here we go. And there's the grill grates, nice and shiny and ready to go. Ooh, you hear that sizzle? Same rules apply. Uh, that's when you're grilling anything else, keep them kind of close to the charcoal source. I'm gonna show you how to get good grill marks on your steak that's gonna impress all of your friends. Just watch what I'm doing. You don't wanna leave your heat open too long. Also, while using grill grates, always keep an eye on your temperature and always have a fire extinguisher close by, especially while using charcoal or propane. Um, anything can happen out here at these cookers, okay? Ah! All right, it's time to give them a twist, guys. And I've been keeping an eye on my temperature the whole ride. You don't want this to get too much further over 350, 400 degrees. Do this, go underneath them, pop them up slowly, okay? Go 45 degrees on a different hot spot of the grill. That'll work. Not exactly where I wanted it, but it will still work. Pop them up, you don't wanna use, lose your bark. And the reason I press this down like this is to kind of dig the meat into the, those grill grates and give them those really deep grill marks that we're looking for. See that here in just a minute. Okay guys, we are rocking and rolling along. So what I've been doing is maintaining in between 350 and 400, but you can tell by the amount of smoke coming out of here, we're, we're getting there fast. I'm cooking these a little bit longer because everybody else likes theirs medium well to, you know, almost done. So you wanna do about two minutes, spin, like I showed you, two minutes, flip, two minutes, spin, Take off. So we're at the flipping part, part three. So here we go. Pop it up, flip it. Now that is a grill mark. Okay, at this point, you want to start getting some butter on them. Okay, now, now they definitely got some good grill marks on them. All right, so now we're almost done. So we're looking for, like I said, another two minutes, spin them, then flip them up into the top rack. After that two minutes goes by, butter that side, 
to kind of cook them to your taste. Um, so here's the deal. Um, with competition steaks, they're looking for 145 degree centers, okay? That's basically gonna put the middle of the steak pink, okay? Um, if you're wanting to do a medium well or well done, you're gonna shoot for about in between 170 to 190, believe it or not. Uh, so what you can do is you can cook them, uh, you know, and, and if they're just a little bit rare in the middle of it and people don't like that, you can pop them in the microwave, for, cut them, pop them in the microwave for a few minutes and they'll go away. But here we are. We're in the last four minutes of this and we're done. Every now and then, pop your grill up, let it breathe and get some of that heat out of there. Okay guys, it's about time to start probing temperature. Got our handy dandy thermo probe. Uh, I think I got this at like Target. That's been a great little instrument. So these thicker ones right now are reading about 126. So we got a little wave. These however, the thinner ones are reading 173, so they're done. The problem is, the longer you leave these on the grill, the uh, blacker those grill marks will get. They're really pretty. If you leave them on the grill for two minutes per flip inside, they're really pretty. But if you leave them on there too long, it'll start spreading out and then the meat will look burnt. So you want to get them off there. I'll show you. I'll show you how to finish cooking them. We know those ribeyes, the big ones, need just a few more minutes. So these, at this point, you can take them, flip them all over, kind of pop them up. And they did something weird where they kind of flipped, so they didn't get the grill marks I was really looking for on those. These definitely will. If I was doing a competition steak turn in, that's what I would turn in, right there. So once you flip those, get you some butter on it. All right, now you're in indirect heat. You just gotta let these warm up just a few more minutes. If you want, you can take your spatula and you can stick it under there and just kind of peek at it and see what it's doing, which they still need some time. But boy, that bark on there is crusty and ready to go. Trust me. These grill marks that these things have on them, there ain't nothing wrong with that. That's what you, these just didn't get really good. They got really good grill marks on that side, as you can see. But this side, it's almost like it, they curved up and all of it wouldn't touch the grill. So that's what happened. And if you want to scoop these back just a smidge, you can. Try to keep them as straight as possible so you can maintain the integrity of your grill marks on it because that's what you're looking for. So you're just going to give that a few more minutes. And you got to be mindful also of the amount of oxygen that you're feeding this thing. Okay, now these are done. That one kind of did. Alrighty. Just let them sit in there for a few minutes. 
We're gonna get these inside, guys. Uh, cut them up and take a sample for you guys. And uh, listen, guys, I really appreciate you guys being a part of our YouTube channel. Uh, please like and subscribe us and uh, follow all our videos. Ring that bell. Uh, leave a comment for us. Uh, anything you want to see cooked, be more than happy to do that for you. And like I've told you in the past, once we hit a certain amount of subscribers, around 1,000 or right out of 1,000, we're going to do a giveaway. We really appreciate you guys. We really appreciate being a part of the uh, YouTube community. It's a lot of fun for us. Um, we do it because we like to be a part of you guys and kind of bring and share a little bit of what knowledge we have to you know to the community so uh we'll meet you guys inside we're gonna sample these big ones guys because this is more realistic for a state competition here look at there that's how most everybody takes their steak okay and we'll cut into one of these and see what they look like but i don't think these are our well done steaks there you go Perfect, wouldn't you say, Amy? Yeah. Is that how you eat yours? Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just take a little piece off here. Like I said, 145, that's what we shot for on this. If you guys aren't happy with the amount of pink in there, you can pop it in the microwave and that's it. Here we go. Extremely juicy, extremely tender, and um, you can taste a lot of the, uh, you can't really taste the marinade that we put on there, which I knew you wouldn't be able to, but you can definitely taste the rubs that we put on. So, excellent, sorry. Okay, we will see you guys next video. Please like and subscribe us, and uh, cook these for your friends and family. They're gonna be impressed. We'll see you guys next time.